Welcome back to our news. Today we've got some major news that are shaking the advertising and privacy world. Get ready because Google just made a huge announcement that's changing everything. All right, let's dive in. So remember when Google promised to phase out third-party cookies? Yeah, that big plan that had everyone in the ad industry freaking out and scrambling for alternatives. Well, guess what? Google just did a complete U-turn. Yep, you heard it right. Third-party cookies are here to stay on Chrome. In a blog post, Anthony Chavez, the VP of Google's Privacy Sandbox initiative, dropped his bombshell. Instead of getting rid of cookies, Google also wants to give us more control. They're introducing a new experience in Chrome where you can make informed choices about cookies and adjust them anytime you want. So instead of saying goodbyes to cookies, we're getting a more customizable cookie jar, I guess. But why the sudden change? Chavez said they're working with regulators and talking to the industry to find a balance between privacy concerns and the need of advertisers and publishers. What that means is that they would have lost a lot of money from advertisers and publishers if they phased out third-party cookies. Originally, Google's plans to ditch cookies sparked a lot of controversy. Advertisers were worried it would mess up the targeting abilities and make them rely more on Google's own data. Now let's rewind a bit. Google first announced the cookie phase out back in 2020. They wanted to improve user privacy and create new ways to target ads throughout the Privacy Sandbox project. But after several delays and tons of feedback from the industry, they've decided to keep cookies around. What that means is that the Privacy Sandbox project wasn't as good as they thought it would. And so this decision isn't just about keeping cookies, it's also about the control and transparency it gives the users. And Google will have to continue pushing for the adoption of Privacy Sandbox APIs and introduce new privacy controls, like the IP protection in Chrome's incognito mode. So while cookies stay, we'll also get some cool new privacy features, I guess. But what does that mean for advertisers as well? It's a mix of relief and frustration, to be honest. On one end, they get to keep their precious cookies, which means they can still target ads effectively to everyone. But on the other end, many have spent years and a lot of money preparing for a cookie-less future. One ad industry exec even joked about sending Google an invoice for all the time wasted. And of course, privacy advocates aren't too happy. They argue that Google is putting profits over privacy. With 80% of Google revenue coming from online ads, it's clear that keeping cookies is good for the bottom line. Critics point out that browsers like Safari and Firefox have blocked third-party cookies for years without major issues. But what about us, the users? This move means we'll have more control over our data, but we'll also continue to be tracked across the web. So it's all about finding that balance between privacy and the ad-supported free internet we love. All right, with that being said, let's check out some other notable news in the advertising world. Rick Edmonds, a media business analyst for the Point Institute, recently highlighted a growing trend, paying for ad-free digital news. For example, the Buffalo News now offers ad-free options for $10 more per month. Why this might seem pricey? It's gaining traction as audience become increasingly concerned about privacy and the intrusive nature of ads. This trend is part of a broader shift in how consumers engage with digital content. Privacy concerns coupled with the annoyance of ads are driving this change. Although only about 10% of newspapers currently offer this option, it's becoming top priority for publishers looking to grow the subscriber base and revenue. As more readers seek a cleaner, ad-free experience, could this be the future of digital news consumption? And as such, are we coming back in time to the time in which we're paying for the newspapers? Next step, the European Commission has issued new guidelines on how energy labels should be displayed in advertisements. This follows a European Court of Justice ruling that ads must not only show the product energy class, but also the full range of classes, like A++ to D or A to G. The ruling aims to provide consumers with clearer information, helping them make more informed choices about energy-efficient products. From now on, advertisers must show a letter in an arrow alongside the relevant range of classes in the visual ads. This change is intended to make energy labels more transparent and understandable, ensuring that consumers can easily compare the energy efficiency of different products. Following up, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called a ban on fossil fuel advertising. Linking it to tobacco ads, he argued that fossil fuel companies should be prohibited from advertising to help tackle the climate crisis. He argues that fossil fuel companies should be prohibited from advertising to help tackle the climate crisis. Gutschus labeled these companies as the 
the godfathers of climate chaos and urge media and tech companies to stop accepting their ad money. This bold statement comes as new data indicates there's an 80% chance that global temperatures will exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels in at least one of the next five years. The proposed bonds aims to reduce the influence of fossil fuels companies and push for more sustainable practices, emphasizing the urgent need for action to combat climate change. Lastly, Walmart is evolving its ad strategy by starting to feature ads for brands that aren't sold in their stores. Traditionally, Walmart is focused on advertising products available on its shelves. However, to continue growing its 2 billion ad revenue business, Walmart is now showing ads for auto services, quick service restaurants, insurance, and other non-endemic brands on its in-store screens. To put it just in a few words, a new form of digital ad of home is now available in the US. This move is part of Walmart's effort to tap into the broader ad market beyond its traditional offering. By diversifying its ad content, Walmart aims to attract a wider range of advertisers and boost his ad revenue further. This strategy mirrors what Amazon has successfully done through platforms like Twitch, Fire TV, and Prime Video, expanding the ad reach beyond their own products. So by showcasing these diverse ads, Walmart hopes to capture new revenue streams and provide value to its advertising partners. Let's now shift gears and dive into our ad showcase of the week. Hyundai has kicked off its Olympics advertisement campaigns with a heartwarming video called It's OK. The video highlights the company's dedication to understanding its customers' life beyond just driving. Hyundai's ad not only promotes their vehicles, but also connects with viewers on an emotional level, emphasizing the importance of joy and balance in every journey, whether it's on the road or in life. And that's it for this episode of Ad News. Now the floor is yours. What do you think of Google changing their mind on third-party cookies? And do you think their competitors will follow suit? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. If you want to learn more about advertising, feel free to visit our website at tedjordan.org to understand how these ads are broadcasted to the world. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.